Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on differential equations. This is video number seven, and I'm going to discuss the characteristic equation. So this is a very important equation when we are solving second order linear differential equations with constant coefficients. So we use the method of the characteristic equation when we're dealing with differential equations with constant coefficients. And this is very important because, for example, if we have variable coefficients, we must use the method of power series. And sometimes we might use, need to use the method of Frobenius. So the solutions to this sort of equation, so let's say a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients, are going to be exponentials, whether real or complex exponentials. So as an example, let's take the following differential equation. So you have a constant a times the second derivative of y, plus a constant b times the first derivative of y, plus a constant c times the zeroth derivative of y. So like I said, the solution is going to be an exponential. Let's say the solution y function of t is equal to e times, or excuse me, e of r times t. So in order for us to, I suppose, look at the solution, we need to plug it into the differential equation and see what happens. So let's see if it's a valid solution. So I, well, I'm going to tell you, first of all, that these that the exponentials are a valid solution. And to prove it, you just plug it in and see what happens, is, which is really what we're doing now. But there's our solution. So I'm going to take the first derivative, so we have r coming down, and we take the second derivative, so we have an r squared term. And you plug this back into our differential equation. So we note that we have, because the exponential doesn't change upon differentiation, we have three times e to the rt, which we can factor out. And what we get is this, the exponential e to the rt multiplied by this quadratic equation. The quadratic equation has the constants a, b, and c, and the exponent r in the exponential. And this is equal to zero, so of course, by the way, it, it is a homogeneous equation. Now, because this whole equation is equal to zero, we assume that e to the rt is non-zero, because if e to the rt was zero, it would mean everything is zero, which would mean a, a trivial solution. So that means the quadratic equation is zero. Uh, the roots of the quadratic equation will give us the value for r, which we plug into our solution e to the rt. So the roots of the equation determine r. It's a quadratic equation, so we can use the following formula in order to get the roots of the quadratic equation. So we have minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Notice, by the way, that we have two values for r because of the plus or minus. And this means that we're getting two solutions. So we're getting an r plus and an r minus. Now, I suppose I'm going to skip ahead a small bit and tell you, tell you a fact, a small bit of theory, that in order to get a general solution, we need to add two particular, what are called particular solutions. So you find two solutions, which we call particular solutions. You add them together, multiplying each by a constant, and you have a general solution. Now, we're after getting, in this case, two values for r, namely an r plus and an r minus each of which will give us their own solution, which will give us a particular solution. So what we do is, in the bottom left, as seen in the bottom left of your screen, we multiply, let's say, the first value of r by a constant, or we plug in the first value of r and multiply the solution by a constant, and we do the same thing with the second value of r. By adding the two, we get the most general solution for y. So this is the general solution, and these two would be particular solutions. Now, in order for us to analyze the behavior of the solution, we need to consider the three situations which we are presented with. So the value of r can be, first of all, real, second of all, complex, or it can be repeated. Now, if it's real, then r1 and r2 are going to be real numbers, and that's great. The reason that's great is because we are looking for the differential equation to have real solutions, because differential equations model real life and you can't get solutions which, for example, are imaginary. Now, in order for us to get real solutions, 
or real roots, we need to have b squared to be greater than 4ac. Otherwise, the square root here is a complex number. Just by the way, I suppose and as, as an aside, just so we're clear, let's say we have a plus i times b. Let's say it's a minus i times b. And let's say a was smaller than b. I'll write it this way. Actually, let's say we have a minus b and a was smaller than b. So it's going to be a complex square root. So I bring out the iota and I change the sign on what we have inside. Anyway, so if we have complex roots, then we have b squared less than 4ac and we get the complex root alpha plus or minus i times beta, or like that. So beta is the imaginary component, alpha is the real component. If you don't fully understand complex numbers, I have quite a few videos put up. I did a section on four videos on complex numbers, and separate to that I did a 10 minute video on pretty much all you need to know about complex numbers. So the other situation or scenario we need to consider is when we have repeated roots. And this occurs when b squared is equal to 4ac. And that is the more complicated of the three scenarios. So I'm going to discuss first of all the real roots, then the, compl the complex, and then perhaps the uh, repeated. So like I said, the general form of the solution is going to be two particular solutions added together. So if we have real solutions to, uh, or we have real values for r, we can just plug them in and we get c1 times e to the r1 times t and c2 times e to the r2 times t. We sum them together and we get the general solution. So when we have real solutions to the quadratic equation, well, the, the solution for, in this case, y is trivial. Well, not it's not trivial, but it's very simple. Now, if we instead get complex roots, so where b squared is less than 4ac, we'll get r1 and r2 are equal to alpha plus or minus i times beta. So you might say that r1 is alpha plus i times beta and r2 is alpha minus i times beta. So let's just plug this into our equation. We know it should be, or our solution, it should be e to the rt. So that is e to the alpha plus or minus i times beta times t, or because we can, I suppose we can separate out the exponentials very easily, and we have e to the alpha times t multiplied by e to the plus or minus i beta t. Now, like I said earlier on, we need real solutions because we're talking about modeling real life and imaginary solutions just don't do. We, I suppose we neglect them on uh, physical grounds is what we'd usually say. So if you look, we have e to the plus or minus i beta t. Now using Euler's equation, we can rewrite this as cos beta t plus i times the sine of beta t. So Euler's equation says e to the i theta is cos theta plus i times the sine of theta. And I've discussed that also in my video, let's say on my 10 minute video on complex numbers. So the cosine term here is a real number. That's great. So this, this particular term is real. It'll give us a real solution. That's, that's what we need. However, there's more work required on the sine component because we still have this coefficient, this imaginary number here and we require a small bit of more a small bit of work now i'm not going to go into the details but the i or the the imaginary number can be taken into account using the coefficient on the sign because we know we know that there are going to be coefficients multiplying each one of these when we put, the, put them into the final solution so just you can just accept that you can look at uh, you can look it up if you like but just has, let's accept that for the moment so that means that the imaginary solutions lead to the following so we have e to the alpha times t plus the constant c1 times the cos of plus or minus beta times t, the constant c2 times sine of plus or minus beta times t. Now the reason we have plus or minus, of course, is because we have plus or minus i times beta. Now the interesting thing here is this appears that it appears that we also require the negative cos and sine solutions. But note the following: cos of a negative number is the same as the cos of a positive number. This means that we don't need to get the negative, the negative value up here in the cosine. Similarly, or not similarly, also sine of a negative number is minus the sine of a positive number, which means that we take out, we only look at the positive number and we bring out this a minus sign up top. But the minus can easily be taken into account using the coefficient, so we can re re just re remain uh, this or leave a positive 
um, excuse me, an addition operator here. So, like I said, you can put it into the coefficient C2. And this is our general solution when we have complex solutions to, uh, to the quadratic. Now, finally, if we have repeated roots, this is the most difficult to, to do because we can't form a general solution because both R1 and R2 are equal. And that means that just the, the two particular solutions, Y1 and Y2, are also equal. Now, I'm not going to go through the theory, to be honest, because I, I, it's just something I don't think is really required at this particular level. We can make a second solution via the principle of superposition. So we can write down the second solution, Y2, a function of T, is equal to a constant, let's say C2, times the variable T, multiplied by the first solution, Y1 of T. So that means we can plug them both together and we get our general solution. That's C1 times Y1 plus C2 times T times Y1 as well. So the general solution is as follows. You're going to be looking at the general solution Y function of T is E to the alpha T, a constant times cos beta T plus a constant times sine beta T, where alpha is the real solution to your quadratic equation or your characteristic equation and beta is the complex component of your characteristic equation or your quadratic equation. And like I said, with repeated roots, you need to multiply the first solution by a variable, the variable t and then you can uh, add, multiply that by a constant. And I suppose obviously there's going to be a bit more work to actually solve an equation using, using this particular method. So that's all I've got to say about that. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment on the box below.